Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. A pleasant good afternoon. I hope you're doing good. Please continue to subscribe down below or up above on the easy-to-use widget to keep the channel growing to 230 or more to meet our goal. This is going to be a quick video on the Dallas Stars, excuse me, and specifically their coach, Rick Bonus, uh, who I think honestly has started to become. He's a guy that went from an interim to being a successful head coach, not to the success, obviously, Greg Berube makes it a hard bar to set when you go from being an interim to just playing your team into a bat out of hell run that got them a cup, but has been fantastic. Two years ago, they were Steel Flyers at Steel Flyers. All Sports Network follows over there as well. We all do great things there. <clears throat> um, he was a guy that got the Stars into being a dark horse candidate in the playoff, and he's a guy that was away from hockey for a while but came back, unlike Kruger, who didn't come back to success, Bonus has come back to success, and I think it's because he plays sometimes, yes, it's not the most exciting, enticing style of hockey to watch from his team because he plays a very good um, structural defensive style of getting your defense to lead to your offense, but he also has started to adjust and shaped uh, his, his strategy to fit his team perfectly more because I think, honestly, the reason why... Klingberg wasn't trade rumors just because of what I just said. It's not like Klingberg's the most fantastic defenseman at playing in the defensive zone. He's just great at once he gets the puck, getting it up and into the offensive zone. So um, that's that's something that probably doesn't perfectly profile player profile wise to Rick Bonus, but I think he's been able to figure out how to perfectly adjust and put those players in his lineup. Uh, compared to even when he first got there and they actually were able to go on that run. And it's also very helpful when you have, uh, I talked about this in the video I did, recapping that fantastic shootout game yesterday, uh, that you were able to see Jake Adi Ottinger uh, do better than Logan Thompson, too bad out of hell uh, performance from youngster goaltenders in that game. It's just you were able to get a little bit more out of Ottinger. But... When it comes to this team, he's got his team pushing the offensive pace more than I've ever seen. But it's also because they're able to push that from their back defense being very good. Minus Klingberg, obviously, again, he's a minus 26. He's not good in the defensive zone. But being good at making defensive plays and pushing it forward into the offensive zone. Even the youngster, Tomas Harley, I think he's going to become a guy that's good in the offensive zone, but more of a two-way guy ever than Klingberg really is, where Klingberg to me is a great offensive defenseman, obviously leaves stuff to be desired in the defensive zone, but I like him a lot just because if with a defense like Dallas, I think he does fit in fine because everybody else in that defense, especially Isa Liddell, his partner is one of the more underrated defensive defensemen, um, is very good defensively. Yanni Hockenpahs also played very good for them, playing about an average of 16 to 17 minutes a night. So they've got it done. They also found... A good backup in Scott Wedgwood, who's been a journeyman that was a good AHLer up until his late 20s, and now has been able, well, mid to late 20s, I should say, and now has been able to find more of a steady realm, hopefully, uh, with the Dallas Stars, because it would be nice to get to see Wedgwood, who seems like from watching different interviews with him, I love watching all these different player interviews online, I get into a wormhole of that sometimes. Uh, he seems to have his head on straight and seems to be a very good uh, backup goaltender that can, can work well with the experiences he's had from the AHL level and NHL level to have around a young guy like Jake Ottinger as well. Obviously, they also have Braden Holpe. Uh, he, unfortunately, is injured, but it is week to week, so he does have the possibility of also coming back in the postseason, which then, this season, I actually enjoyed watching Braden Holpe again. Obviously, last season he was solid as well. But this season, I think he was even better in moments for the Dallas Stars and kind of fit into a perfect blend uh, with Ottinger. And he, he was a big reason in the 24 games he played that they were able to have that good platoon. And then Wedgwood in the handful of games he's played was able to have the good platoon that all their goalies were kind of able to all play the most. The guy played was 47, and Ottinger was still isn't a lot in the grand scheme of things. 36 um, total games for Wedgwood and then 24 for Holpe, who's going to have fresh legs when he does come back. I think the Stars <clears throat> have the potential to be a dark horse team, and that's something I'll talk about more uh, in a video when I do a playoff preview for them once they do clinch, if they do end up clinching with their magic number being at one since the game went into overtime yesterday, which I think they will. Uh, this is an exciting team to watch. I don't know how far they go in the playoffs, but stay tuned for that prediction. But this was just a quick video 
highlighting the team and just going over the team and the team that Rick Bonus is able to put on the ice and put out each night and getting the most out of them because they don't have the sexiest team that pops out eye-popping guys on paper. But he's able to just figure out ways to do it and play a good defensive structure that leads to the offense because obviously Tyler Sagan also not the sexiest in the defensive zone. Roth at this point of his career isn't as quick as he used to be, Michael Roffel. <clears throat> so he's still very good instinctually in both zones. Just isn't as great as he was at his time with the Flyers necessarily at being able to get to everything in both zones. And then Jamie Benn isn't as quick as he used to be, so he used to be much better in both zones. Now he's more of just a guy that's a great net front presence that can still do it in the defensive zone and knock guys off the puck. I think he's a guy that honestly would step up in the postseason. But again, talk about that more in a future video. But I think Bonus has them playing to the best of their abilities, and that's all you can ask in a head coach. And has guys playing above expected abilities coming into the season as well when it comes to some cats as well. So I think all that put together, he deserves all the credit and honestly is one of the more underrated coaches in hockey. But peace out, everybody. This has been a quick video on Rick Bonus being one of the more underrated head coaches in hockey, and he deserves all the praise uh, thrown his way from what he's been able to do with the Dallas Stars and kind of be like more like you give credit to baseball managers at times for getting the most out of rosters, like you gave credit to Bob Melvin with the A's for years for my also fellow baseball fans or to guys like Kevin Cash or Joe Madden for Tampa Bay that they're able to get the most out of the roster, well, that's exactly what he is doing here. That is exactly what Rick Bonus is doing here. But peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Please do subscribe down below or up above on the easy-to-use widget to keep the channel growing to 230 or more by the end of April. I really appreciate you guys' love and support. I'll be doing a video on the season wrap-up of the Dallas Stars very soon as well. Peace out, everybody. Stay safe. Did videos on the Kraken and Sabres this far season wrap-up. Um, and... Look ahead kind of to the future as well. Obviously, they have a couple games left, but those are only a couple games, so you can do the wrappers at this point. Check them out if you wish. Have a great, safe, pleasant day, everybody, and enjoy the hockey.